Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Also, big shout out to my subscribers. We're moving the needle quickly on the subscriber count. And this is a brand new channel, so your support's much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, well, what you begin for is a video from me every week, maybe every two weeks on automotive, DIY, um, travel, tech, but no travel right now because of COVID-19. So on that note, let's make sure that you're staying safe, taking care of your family and uh, just being responsible. So what's today's video about? Well, if you saw the thumbnail, I was pretty distressed and it does have to do with costs. So let's get into that. So as you can see, I'm filming in my garage here, practicing proper social distancing, which is good. That's the being responsible part. But today's video all started with this guy. So this is a dash cam, Nextface 522 GW that I installed in my M4 in a previous video. Check out the link above if you want to look at that. Anyway, at the conclusion of that video, my dash said that I had a low battery warning and I needed to charge it. So I started the car and I charged it and everything was fine, the, the warning went away. But that got me thinking. And like many of you, if you start thinking, especially when it comes to your car, you start thinking ahead, okay, well, what if I have a battery problem? What's this gonna entail? So I'll tell you a little bit about that. So this is a lithium ion battery that comes with the car. That's the original one and it is quite expensive. I was expecting at least $500, being that it's a BMW, but it's not $500, it's not $1,000, it's not $1,500, it's not $2,000, it's $2,200 Canadian, plus taxes. I think I could install it myself. But there's more to it. You have to register the batteries, so the ECU could talk to blah, blah, blah. I'll get into that in a minute, but, uh, that begs the point, why, or the question, why do you need a lithium ion battery of that type of price in a car like this? So I did some research, I'm just gonna share with you uh, some of what I found. One of the first benefits is a difference in weight. So instead of 26 and a half kilograms with a lead acid or AGM battery, you're looking at about 14 kilograms. So not quite half, but around that uh, area. Another big one is longevity, so charging cycles. So a conventional lead acid battery or AGM, you're maybe looking at 350 or so charging cycles. You can get about 5,000 with a lithium ion. So if you just look at the amount of those charging cycles, every time you would need to replace a battery just to get up to 5,000 cycles, you'd probably be pushing up to that $2,200 price range anyway. So do you buy one that's already that price? or do you keep replacing batteries until you end up spending that much anyway? So another benefit is a lithium ion battery is more stable and holds a higher charge state, which means that it's more reliable when you need constant power or large amounts of power on demand at any even time without it dropping in, in voltage. When it gets warmer out and there's higher temperatures, lithium ion battery performs better as it starts to get warmer. So one of the benefits is when you're charging with the alternator, because it has integrated circuitry or electronics in the lithium ion battery, it talks to the ECU of the car and the alternator intermittently gives it the amount of charge that it needs to make sure that it's not just a constant charge rate, which is diminishing the life of the battery. So it's a, call it a, a smart charging system, um, which I'm gonna talk about next, which has to do with the CTEC charger. All right, this is the SeaTech lithium ion battery charger, which is one of the few chargers on the market that you would want to use to properly charge the battery in your BMW M4. So let's uh, open it up and then let's take a look at it and then let's install it on the car. All right, so we have a couple different ways we can install this. I've opted to use the terminals at the front of the car on the positive connector and the ground. 
I'll show you how I'm gonna route that through in a second. And it is a quick connect, so I can just take the charger away. And then when I'm parking the M4 for a long period of time, I can hook it up and keep that battery at its optimal level and uh, looked after. Um, so let's get into this. Okay, so let's plug it in. Nice little click there. That's your little release button. All right, we're just about to plug it in. When I do that, one of these two lights is gonna come on. The top one means I hooked it up wrong. The bottom one means I hooked it up right. So we're gonna assume I hooked it up right when I plug this in. Then these lights are gonna start going off. The first one is to check if the battery is going to accept the charge or not. If it's gonna accept the charge, it'll continue on. If it's not, then it's a defective battery. Number two, it's gonna give it quite a bit of voltage or current, sorry, which is going to charge the battery up to about 90%. Uh, then it's gonna move on to step three once that's achieved and you can see the current slope starts to come down, but it's gonna continue charging it to about 95%. Then at number four, it's going to analyze, uh, make sure the battery is holding a charge. If it's not holding a charge, that might be an indication it needs to be replaced. Then it gets to step five, which is uh, completion. I'm just following the guide here. It uh, starts to do the final charge with reduced current. Then it gets to number six, which is maximization final charge with maximum voltage up to 100% of the battery's capacity. And then where you want to get is to number seven. Number seven is the float. So it's just going to maintain the battery voltage at maximum level by providing a constant voltage charge only for what it needs. And then number eight, it just keeps maintaining the battery between 95 and 100 percent um, just by sending it pulse charges, um, which is what you would want it to be doing when you have it parked for long periods, maybe over the winter. So let's just plug it in. We got our green light, which is good news. Right now it's doing the accept phase. Oh, jumped right to number two. Charging to 90 percent of uh, the battery's capacity. Now it has been sitting in the garage here for a few days without being charged. And I have been opening the hood and the trunk and the doors and, and messing around with things. So it's probably gonna sit there for a while. If you're doing this for the first time, it could end up sitting there for, it says here, 10 hours. And then when it goes to step three, that can take 30 hours. So I did do this a few days ago and in about 14 hours, it brought me all the way up to step seven and it was fine, so basically overnight. Got the battery all charged up, we're good as new. That's good news, $2,200 right now would not be fun. But anyway, if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing to get all the updates, and we'll talk to you soon.